importing transactions into QuickBooks Desktop. Okay, so with uh, Batch Enter, that's the name of the tool. Batch Enter was introduced in Accountant Edition and Enterprise Edition only. So if you have Pro or Premier, this is not possible. You cannot use this tool. Uh, you will need a third-party tool like Set Access to be able to import transactions. But if you're using Accountant or Enterprise 2013 or above, and there's a limited <clears throat> access to this in QuickBooks Mac 2015, and QuickBooks Online doesn't have any transaction import. Now, this is the same copy and paste style, which I like. Columns have to be customized the same way. If you're working with QuickBooks 2013, you can only do checks, deposits, and credit card charges. If you're in 2014, 15, and 16, you can do invoices and bills, uh, invoices, credit memos, and bills as well. So let me show you an example of that. So let me just go in here to make sure that I don't have, let me go into customers, and let me just make sure that I don't have any invoices, right? So I, I guess I do have some invoices here. Actually, let me switch to another company file. This will make a lot more sense. I'm going to switch to another company file that already has a customer list. And then I'm going to show you how to import um, invoices. So let me come in here and open up the spreadsheet that I'm going to import. So there are two types of uh, invoice importing. And when we're talking about invoicing, it will work the same way with sales orders, with estimates, with purchase orders, um, with sales receipts. So any transaction like a purchase order, sales receipt, estimate, or invoice um, is going to work the exact same way. The difference is if you have single line items, that means that every invoice has a single line item or every bill has a single line item or every purchase order, sorry, not purchase orders, every um, invoice or bill has a single line item, you can bring them into QuickBooks using this feature. So I'm going to go to Batch Enter here on the Accountant menu, Batch Enter, and then I'm going to select, hit the drop down here and select Invoices. So notice these are my, ch my choices here, checks, deposits, credit card charges and credits, bills and invoices. These are my choices. So I'm going to choose invoices here. <clears throat> and again, the batch enter tool can only import invoices with single line items. So exactly what you're seeing here, single line items only. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> when I select this information here and click on copy, then I can come in into QuickBooks and I have to make sure before I did that, I kind of went too far there. I have to make sure that this matches date, number, name, item, item description, and amount. So let me go back into QuickBooks, make sure that's all, that all matches. So I have name, number, actually name should be on the top. Where's my date here? Yeah, so I have date, number, name, item. Okay, so we go date first, number second, name, and then I have my item. Then I have my description, and then I have my amount. I think these don't have quantities. Yep, these don't have quantities. They just have one lump sum amount. Perfect. So I can get rid of everything else. I don't need anything else. And then I'll hit OK. And then I'll go ahead and paste that now. OK. Now, if my items are not in my item list, like in this particular case, I can just hit the drop down here and select the correct one. OK, because sometimes if you're importing from somewhere where your item list may be missing or for whatever reason, I can just come in here and select whatever the right uh, item is, right? So let's say that's the right item. If it's not in there, I can create it on the fly by just creating a, a service item here, whatever it is that I'm going to do. Okay. And, um, and then after, you know, you, you get rid of all these reds and these reds are extremely important. If you have reds, that means you're not going to be able to import um, all the information. So, so if you have reds, it's probably because your item list and your Excel somehow is not matching. And that's an extremely important piece. Your customer name list, your item list, that all has to match. Because if it doesn't match, then you have an underlying issue. Um, now, it's it's kind of nice that I can change them on the fly as I'm, as I'm putting them here, but then that's no longer importing. You know, that's sort of quasi-importing. But that's it. That's all I have to do. And then I'll go to, um, in this case, I think I'm missing. No, I'm good there. So I'm going to hit Save Transactions. I'll hit Yes. And then I'm going to go into my Customer Center and go to Transactions and go to Invoices. Okay, and I'll click here, All Dates. And then these are all the invoices that are imported. So this is, uh, uh, actually, that's the exception. I had done that before before the test here. So this is the invoice that I imported, single line item. Okay? So a single line item that I imported, uh, another one. 
Okay, that's actually, that's, let me delete this one because I had done this one before to do a quick test. And then there's, right, one single line item. So again, this tool here called Batch Enter allows me to import checks, deposits, credit cards, bills, bill credits, invoices, and credit memos, but only single line items. Again, only single line items. So if I have a spreadsheet that looks like this, and I have, for example, let me just zoom this in to collect, make a lot more sense when I zoom this in here, put here 200. When I have, for example, I have invoice 1088 that has two line items. So very evident here, it's got two line items, right? So I have an invoice with two line items. I cannot use batch enter, right? My batch enter is going to create them as two separate invoices and that could be a problem. So I'm going to talk about uh, using a third-party tool to import uh, multiple line items a little bit later on, but I want to just kind of focus on these tools that are here. The other uh, piece I want to show you is uh, doing deposits and checks, okay? So let me uh, go ahead and switch back into here, and then I'll click on checks, and then I'm going to pull up a spreadsheet that is sort of a, a typical spreadsheet that we pull with bank transactions. So <clears throat> I'll just make the assumption for a second that we downloaded our uh, transactions from Bank of America or from a bank. And this is all basically debits and credits coming in from the bank, right? So this is what, what it looks like. Some have pay details, some don't, because some checks won't have pay information, whatever. So whenever you have data like this, which is bank data, it's basically going to be either a deposit or a uh, withdrawal. QuickBooks can import it, but it can only do one type at a time. So it can do all checks in one shot and all deposits in another shot. Anyway, so let's do deposits first. So what I do is, in order to make this work, is I basically, in a nutshell, I create, I, I take this spreadsheet um, that contains both debits and credits, and I'm gonna show you basically just a quick um, Excel tool here. Um, so basically, I'm gonna click on uh, the data tab and click on filter. And this is just an Excel thing. It's not a QuickBooks thing. Again, sorry that I'm showing, showing you Excel stuff. And then I click here where it says deposits and credits. And then I'm going to uncheck select all. I'm going to hit select all and hit OK. And then basically under debits and withdrawals, I'm going to put um, here select none. And actually, sorry about that. Um, here under this drop down, under the filters, I'm going to click sort by smallest to largest. And basically, I'm going to see a bunch of uh, credit and deposits on the top, and then I'm gonna see a bunch of debits and withdrawals on the bottom. Now I can do the copy and paste straight from here, or I can create separate spreadsheets just to kind of help me do it, which is what I've done. Whichever method you do is okay. Um, what I wanted to show you with the filters that, sorry that I got a little bit stuck there, is if I wanna only import, let's say one month's worth, here where it says date, because I'm using the Excel filter, I can just um, uncheck here 2015 and I'll check, let's say January and February and hit OK. And then this will be filtered and it won't show me anything past January and February. So that's what I wanted to show you in Excel if you wanted to just do a particular group of uh, deposits. So the same thing here, I'm going to go ahead and click and only do January and hit OK. And then I have a, these are the deposits I'm going to bring in. So again, this is the deposits that I brought in from the bank. So this would normally be something I download through, you know, Chase or Bank of America or whatever. And I'm going to send all these deposits to <clears throat> to us to one specific income account. So I'm not too worried about the specific account it goes to. So I'm going to hit copy here. I have to make sure this matches again, date, payee, memo, amount. So in QuickBooks, I'm going to go to customize columns on the top right. And then I have date, payee, memo, and amount. Okay, the rest of the stuff I can get rid of, hit OK, and then I'll right click here and hit paste. All my deposits will come in. <clears throat> Again, for the sake of just kind of wow factor, I'm not going to filter this and only show January. I'll just do the whole year. Deposits are typically the easiest, right? Because those are not going to have a lot of uh, payee information unless, you know, it's a wire transfer of some sort, right? Um, so I'm going to right click here and hit paste. And then under account, I'll just use a generic income account here. So I'm gonna go here into my income account list and I'll just put whatever, construction income. I'm gonna <clears throat> right click on that, hit copy down. And basically that's gonna 
take everything that I copy and paste it and put it into one income account. Again, if you, you have to reclassify those, there are tools in QuickBooks, which I won't, don't really, I don't think I have time to cover um, that can do that sort of reclassification. Okay. So under pay here, anything that comes in red, you know, you have to make sure I may have to, you know, find out if my customer is correct because it could mean that my customer is not in my customer list or it means that I may have to create the customer. So it's possible that I have to create the customer like this um, here, here customer um, because when I copy and paste it, it wasn't in my original list. So that's another kind of thing to make sure that you look at that your customer list is not going to be 100% in, uh, in QuickBooks first. Um, but also, we, we, I, taught you, I taught you how to import the list of customers and vendors through the add edit multiple. So you can, um, it's one a quick technique that I use is I import my entire vendor list and customer list before using this tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save transactions, hit yes. Right, and you have to also make sure that you're doing it in the right bank account because this you, there's no undo button for this. So once you do it, that's it. So let me go into my, um, not reconcile, let me go into register. And then I'm gonna show you, see all my deposits are there, okay? This is the only thing that I imported, all my deposits. Same thing with um, expenditures. So let me go into back into my spreadsheet here, go into withdrawals. I'll select all this here. Then we have uh, date, number, pay, memo, and amount. So in QuickBooks, when I do the import now for, in this case, checks, right? Because all debits, all bank debits are called checks. So that was uh, date, I think, number. We have to insert in here because payees are going to have that. So it was date, number, pay, memo, amount. Date, number, pay, memo, amount. So date, number, pay memo and amount and account is always going to be blank at the end so i'm going to right click paste here okay uh, again i may have like for example i got some see if some vendors are not there i have to actually click on it and create the vendor and that's again if i don't have my vendor list and i'm importing data with a vendor list doesn't exist i have to go through all these reds here and make sure i create all these vendors so that's kind of a, a typical thing and then now I have basically the memo, the date, the pay. I have all the stuff. All I have to do now is then do my classification. Okay, and that obviously that's a manual process. Now, if for whatever reason we we happen to have those accounts in Excel, um, then that's gonna you know that's just gonna paste in there and it's not gonna be an issue. But it, because we didn't have the expense categories in there, that's still a, a piece of the work that the accountant has to do, which is classifying all these things. Okay. Now, just for simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and select office supplies, right click, copy down and hit save transactions. I'm going to put everything on the office supplies. Again, I don't, I'm, I know that's not correct. 